guys, we have started off with the pathology of central nervous system. In that, we have looked at the de developmental anomalies. Then we have looked at the infections of central nervous system. Now we will look at the cerebrovascular diseases. Okay. In that, you should know ischemic brain damage because of hyperperfusion. Then intracranial hemorrhage can happen and trauma to the brain what will happen. So cerebrovascular diseases we are going to look at now. Okay. Now in cerebrovascular diseases, ischemic brain damage. So basically what happens if there is anoxia. Okay, anoxia means less oxygen. Now this can happen because of either anoxic anoxia, anemic anoxia, histotoxic anoxia or stagnant anoxia. Any reason of anoxia can lead to ischemic necrosis of the brain. So the brain can get necrosed. In that there are two types. There could be a global hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy because of generalized hyperperfusion or there could be cerebral infarction which is more local. So if there is a severe localized reduction or cessation of blood supply, then there can be infarct. So you should know that cerebral infarction will be localized. However, global hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is generalized cerebral hyperperfusion. Then coming to intracranial hemorrhage, hemorrhage may be traumatic, non-traumatic or spontaneous. Okay. Now there are two main types of spontaneous non-traumatic intracranial hemorrhage. So hemorrhage itself, hemorrhage, under that you have spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage and there could be traumatic injury. Traumatic injury they have put as a separate topic itself, spontaneous intracranial, okay, in that intracerebral hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage they have asked in the exam, so you will have to know subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, what is this intracerebral hemorrhage? It is usually because of hypertension, okay. So hemorrhage because of hypertension. Guys, we are talking about blood. Are you understanding? It's the blood in the brain. Are you understanding? Wake up guys. We are discussing hemorrhage. We are talking about cerebrovascular diseases. We looked at ischemia. We looked at uh, uh, ce cerebral infarction. Now we are looking at hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, if it is a spontaneous non-traumatic intracranial hemorrhage, it could be either intracerebral hemorrhage Usually because of hypertensive origin or it could be subarachnoid hemorrhage. The subarachnoid hemorrhage usually will be due to uh, aneurysm, aneurysmal origin, okay, due to aneurysm it can be, okay, usually, okay. Then coming to traumatic injuries of the brain. Traumatic injuries of the brain may result in Epidural hematoma, subdural hematoma or parenchymal brain damage. What and all can happen? Epidural hematoma, subdural hematoma, parenchymal brain damage. Okay. So in this parenchymal brain damage, you can say concussion, diffuse axomal injury, contusion, laceration, intracerebral hemorrhage, brain swelling, so many things you can write. Is this fine guys? So trauma to brain is fine. So now we have uh, finished the cerebrovascular diseases of the central nervous system. Let's see if our friend can repeat what and all we have told. Hi, hi, hi people. So, we are looking at uh, cerebrovascular diseases. Here there are, there could be ischemic brain damage, spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage, trauma to the brain. Under ischemic brain damage, there could be global hypoxic situation or there could be a local ischemia which could lead to cerebral infarction. Coming to intracranial hemorrhage, if it is spontaneous non-traumatic intracranial hemorrhage, there are two types intracerebral hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage okay subarachnoid hemorrhages are usually due to aneurysms 
Subarachnoid hemorrhages are usually due to aneurysms. This is important because they have asked this in the exam. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is a spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage, non-traumatic. Okay. And um, what else? Let's move on to trauma to the brain. If there is trauma to the brain, what and all can happen? Epidural hematoma can happen. Subdural hematoma can happen. Parenchymal brain damage can happen. Under this parenchymal brain damage, concussion, diffuse, axomal injury, contusion, laceration, intracerebral hemorrhage, brain swelling, all these can happen. So we are done with the cerebrovascular diseases of the central nervous system. So I think in the next video we will cover uh, miscellaneous diseases of the central nervous system. Tumors of the central nervous system we will take up in the next next video. Tumors of the central nervous system will come next next. Now central nervous system miscellaneous diseases we will cover in next video. Come back for the next video if you are interested guys. Bye bye.